Medical information obtained from our website or on the live show is not intended to be a substitute for professional care. If you have, or you suspect you might, have an illness or other medical condition, you should consult a health care provider. The opinions expressed on this radio program are not necessarily those of the sports doctor, this radio show, or their sponsors. Hey, everybody. Welcome live from Chicago. It's the Sports Doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Weil, sports podiatrist, all things sports, medicine, fitness, and wellness, brought to you by Global School Wear, school uniforms by Tommy Hilfiger, Lower Extremity Review, and MVP Parent Magazines, UK Health Radio. Got a great double-headed today. Dr. Virgie Bright-Ellington, she's an internal medicine physician, She's an author, and she's a medical billing and healthcare expert who will be joining me, along with Maria Monadakis, an international best-selling author, a transformational leader, and personal development coach. Then the sports doctor's in, some Bob Guida wisdom emails. First, uh, Dr. Virgie, welcome to the sports doctor. Dr. Bob, good talking with you. Give us uh, some background on yourself uh, again, you, with internal medicine and then becoming uh, somebody paying such attention to the world of, you know, in billing and the, and the healthcare care um, maze. <laughs> yeah. So, you know what, Dr. Bob, I have been a board certified internal medicine physician for, I don't like dating myself, but, you know, it is what it is, 25 years. And I was a publicly traded very large health care insurance company executive for a decade, which gave me a total 360-degree view of the U.S. health care system and how it works, or so I thought, Dr. Bob, until I became a patient and figured out that the U.S. health care system is taking advantage of all of us. You know, they benefit from costs going up, and, you know, all of us are suffering as a result. Well, you know, there, uh, it's like talking about big pharma, you know, the same uh, scenario, these, these big systems. You know, we have the finest health care in the world. We just can't afford it. That's uh, right. And, and the, way the, the, way, the way the system seems to be brought in again, you know, uh, uh, by the way, you dated yourself 25 years. I'm doing the radio 40. So I'm going to date myself right along with you. <laughs> well, thank you, you know? for making me feel young, Dr. Bob. Yes, give it, give it take a few weeks. <laughs> it's not a sports family or sports team uh, that, again, is not in the middle of a lot of these challenges, whether it's the college athlete who had surgery, he's covered, he's not covered. What about after all of these things uh, with the uh, idea that uh, professional sports uh, sometimes we see five years, 10 years after someone's career, they're broke. And a lot yep. of it is, you know, sometimes medical costs. Uh, so medical costs is a gigantic problem for all of us, isn't it? Yes. It's the number one cause of debt and bankruptcy in the United States, period, bar none. Do you find, again, with all the experience you've had touching base with some of these areas, and we used to always talk about also there was a contest that was between doctors Lawyers and insurance companies, long uh-huh. time ago. And insurance companies won. They <laughs> you know, totally had, won. Got yeah, it right in the head. Lawyers totally came won. in second. Yeah. You know, and, <laughs> and, and, the, and the doctors came up the rear. But with all your experience, are we um, understanding, you know, are we aware of what's going on? And uh, are we getting educated, which is what we're doing this minute, about some of the things that can make a difference, um, you know, like uh, how, uh, how are we doing? So to answer your first question, Dr. Bob, and that is the 100, actually the $1 trillion question, question, and that's because $1 trillion is the cost of medical bills and debt in the United States every year. But anyway, uh, no, uh, 99.9% of us, I would say, and when I mean us, those of us in living in the United States who have to inter- interact with the U.S. healthcare system don't understand what's happening. And the 
system, unfortunately, I hate to sound conspiratorial, but that's the way the system benefits from us not knowing, the American consumer and patient not knowing what our rights are and how the system really runs. Well, do you find that, um, again, this, this uh, awareness, of course, I guess the, uh, the pandemic exploded all of these things in all of our faces times 50, uh, you know, with these uh, kinds of uh, challenges uh, that were laid on top of, uh, of everything else. And, you know, this has always been one of the great dilemmas that we've talked about for years on this floor. Why is the United States so much more expensive? Why can't we get universal health care where somebody doesn't have to aggravate over it every day should somebody get sick? Because that's still the situation uh, very often. You know, in Europe, you might say, hey, listen, I don't got to worry. I'm covered. True or false? So this is the problem. This is the thing. This is why, getting back to your earlier point, that the U.S. healthcare companies, insurance companies, rather, won. So just to cut to the chase, the U.S. healthcare system runs on the publicly traded health insurance system, and that is because the system benefits from costs going up because what do publicly traded companies have to do? Their number one job, actually by law, federal law, is to return a profit every year to the shareholder. Yes, so the big business. It's again, return, like the big business year. of sports where we see, you know, the, the health and welfare many times of players and or others is uh, secondary and tertiary to, you know, this whole financial burden. Uh, again, well, or the they're making in money and the Dr. big, the big uh, business interest, side. Right, at least the interest of the entertainment sports, professional sports world and, and college sports world, it's in alignment, the interest and in health of the person, the people that are involved in the system that have to depend on the system. In the U.S. healthcare system, the benefit is completely opposite. The interests are, couldn't be more opposite. The U.S. health care insurance companies benefit from costs going up because they have to. They have to show a profit every year, and so they make sure that they put never bet against the house, right? They make sure they put it's a, insurance companies are actuarial risk companies. They, that's what they do. They put in risk and gamble for a living. They're actuarial companies, essentially. But the patients and the American consumer and the, our athletes, pro athletes, college athletes, hobbyists, all of us, we all benefit from costs staying affordable. So you have two diametrically opposed interests, and so that's how we ended up here. That's what's happening, and that's why it's not going to get any better. Well, I'm going to ask you more about that, including your series, uh, you know, what your doctor wants you to know. Everybody listening to the sports doctor, I'm Dr. Bob Wild, sports podiatrist. If you go to my website, sportsdoctorradio.com. If you go over to radio shows, you can go back years, international guests, national guests, local guests, an array of topics, big umbrella with topics and subjects we talk about on the Sports Doctor. Listen to whatever you'd like. If you go to newspaper articles and magazines, uh, we have thousands and thousands of followers, a lot of great information, uh, a lot of excitement with MVP Parent Magazine, Lower Extremity Review, great articles. Uh, and again, you could uh, follow us uh, on um, crazy Twitter at Sports Doc, DOC Radio. We're talking uh, with Dr. Virgie Bright Ellington, uh, 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 who's now a real activist a- uh, advocate for the whole healthcare system and its challenges. Uh, and boy, you've mentioned quite a few already. Uh, so the your your serious things you pay attention to. Um, what what are you are your bullet points that you'd like to stress when you're saying you know what your doctor wants you to know? Um, where do you start, Doc? <laughs> you know what, you know what, Doctor Bob? We can just summarize it into three simple steps. There's only one right way to pay a medical bill, and that involves three steps. Now, I, before I get to talking about how to pay a medical bill, which is how to cover and pay for the care, how to make sure you get the best price, the lowest, most affordable price for care once you received it. But oftentimes, 
in the sports world, we have these elective surgeries, knee procedures, right? Things happen, right? And yes. I also want to let you know these three steps can be applied to when you have to schedule a surgery. So the three steps. Yeah, plus you just said a major word. You said electives, and that yes. throws a whole other wrench, exactly. gigantic monkey wrench, <laughs> exactly. uh, into, the, into the mix. But you know what? This, this is basic medical financial literacy, and you talked about international health coverage in other countries and that kind okay. of thing. The U.S. is the only industrialized country where you have to have basic medical financial literacy because there is no public health option for those that need or, or, or want yeah. it. But so when it people are parts of groups, they're, whether they're in Medicaid, whether they're in Medicare, whether they're in Blue Cross Blue Shield, whatever, these giant yeah. companies, there's Maybe rules and regulations. And, yeah. you know, you got to follow rules and regulations. Yeah. What are the three areas, again, that you find so necessary to stress? Please. Yes, you got it. Three important steps. The three steps are the only one right way to deal with a medical bill is step one is to call and ask for a real bill. Because nine times out of ten, Dr. Bob, what we get in the mail is not a real bill, meaning it doesn't have what's called CPT codes. CPT codes are... Yeah, it's an explanation of benefits, right? It's that yes. uh, lingo no, sir. No, it's uh, that not. you might no, get from not. your insurance company. It's not? If you have insurance, you will see CPT codes in your EOB, your explanation of benefits, if you have insurance, yes. But often, the unfortunately, too often, in my experience, Dr. Bob, nine times out of ten, the provider, meaning the hospital, the physical therapy provider... The, the big groups often will send you, meaning us, the patient or the athlete, a different bill than what they send their insurance company. And the insurance company, they make sure they send a bill that has CPT codes, which okay. is... So number a, one, number one, number you're one saying yeah. you, want, you, want some, you want us to, you want people to get a real bill, yes, whatever the, the procedure or expense was medically, what's the next? And so, and also, if you're planning an elective procedure, make sure you ask the doc, the surgeon who's planning the procedure, hey, doc, what CPT code you're going to bill for this procedure so I can make sure my insurance, if you have insurance, covers it. So that's step one. Step two, you're going to take those CPT codes and you're going to Google what Medicare pays for those codes. Actually, the real thing you want to do is you're going to Google it because you want to get a description of the procedures or the services that you're being charged for to make sure it sounds like the care you receive, that you're not getting double billed or you're not being upcharged. And while you're there, you're going to Google what Medicare pays for it. And people will say, well, I'm young. Medicare is for old people. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay. Yes. But and they don't, Medicare and they, 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 they've, never paid, they've never paid well. Dr. Virgie, what's the <laughs> best website people could find out about that uh, you and what you're doing and, for instance, the series of what we're talking about, what's the best site for that? Well, you can, you can find me at crushmedicaldebt.com and free information and resources on the three steps of the only run right way to pay any medical bill and every medical bill. All right, hit me with that third step. <laughs> the final step is once you got the codes and you figured out yes. what Medicare charges for them, and Medicare is federal government health insurance, and that's what – Everybody regards as the basic lowest number price, fair price for any medical service. So that's where you're yes, going to take right. your number to step three to say, okay, you charge me $10,000 for this procedure for this service or surgery in many cases. You know what? I figured out in my case I am willing and able to pay $3,000. Who can I speak with who can help me set up an interest-free payment plan? Boom, period. That's it. Aha, uh -huh. important. Yes, you know. Um, somebody might have an MRI for twenty five hundred dollars, and Medicare pays four hundred. This Correct. is, you know, the uh, surgical procedure eighteen thousand. They pay forty two hundred. There so you there's go. Absolutely, you there's that Bob. situation. But what you just mentioned, again, a really interesting point is that people should be proactive. For example, if there's some sort of large balance, to being able to try to get uh, set up something that could be doable. Correct. It, it's Can, does anybody answer the phone? No, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Right? I, you know, it's, it's so automated. Uh, again, and the larger the medical, like you mentioned, you're part of a large medical group. I've always been independent. Uh, these large groups, 
Uh, it just sometimes it's so cumbersome with what's uh, uh, involved in everything compared to when you saw the neighborhood doctor and you gave him a check. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 It's real. As you know, Dr. Bob, it's, it's real. So, yeah, that's so think, what you have to look out for. These kinds of information. Be aware you know, of. The, the con- yes. And, again, the idea of being moving forward to try to make changes, um, I'm, I'm optimistic, you know, again, that we're learning, you know, uh, some of these challenges hitting us in the face in so many different ways uh, in the world, again, of the healthcare and or billing, which is an interesting topic for people to even think about, that, again, it makes big sense uh, to try to be uh, educated. But I'm optimistic that these different groups, including big business, is we're going to have to learn a way because we can't afford it. It's like Almost we were talking with diabetes. We can't afford to have 300 exactly. million diabetics and, and, and such, such uh, o- o- obesity concerns. Uh, it'll break us. So we've got we've to uh, improve the system. So, the, um, uh, you know, good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> good luck with that, right? <laughs> well, in brief, I, well, I think it's a, it's a great it's topic. It's in everybody's interest. And uh, I, I think the I always like these three words on the sports doctor. It's awareness, education, and uh, a positive action. Quickly, give me the website again, Dr. Berge. CrushMedicalDebt.com. CrushMedicalDebt.com. Dr. Berge Bright Ellington, thank you so much for joining me. We will have you back. Hold on, Dr. Berge. My pleasure. Hey, everybody, it's Dr. Bob Weil, a sports doctor. I'm excited to announce the release of my new book, co-written with Sharky Zartman, Hashtag Hey Sports Parents, an essential guide for any parent with a child in sports. You know, Sharky is a former Hall of Fame volleyball player. She's the mom of two daughters who became Division I volleyball players. Together, we have over 70 years of combined youth sports experience. The goal of the book Give you the essential tools and guidance to make your experience as a sports parent the best it could be. Hashtag Hey Sports Parents is divided into four sections. The first section, Sports Parenting 101. Sharky talks everything about uh, parenting, about coaching, that whole uh, interaction between parents and coaches, coaching your own kid. Uh, what's the, what are the things to really pay attention to? The second section is the Sports Doctors In, yours truly. Uh, my discussion of injury prevention and treatment, choosing the best shoes, youth sports and drugs, essential exercises, the dilemma of youth football, orthotics. Third section, uh, experts speak out. We bring together eight different experts in nutrition and sports performance and mental training in all aspects of coaching in that section. The last section is the parent's perspective, some insights from about a half a dozen parents of athletes. So everyone, hey, get out your megaphone, spread the word. Now available on Amazon. Order now. You'll be more confident. So will your young athlete. Hashtag, hey, sports parents. Hey, everybody, we're back live from Chicago. It is the Sports Doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Wild, sports podiatrist. I want to welcome Maria Manadakis. She's an international best-selling author, a transformational leader, and a personal development coach. Maria, welcome to the Sports Doctor. Thank you so much, Dr. Bob, for having me. You know, we talk a lot on the sports, Dr. Maria, about the, I call it the mental game, whether you're the best athlete in the world, whether you're their parents, whether you're their teammates, uh, whether you are trying to, to stick with your um, 
uh, program of uh, losing weight or sticking with your exercise or dealing with um, all sorts of illness and injury problems. Uh, so when we're talking about the, um, the contest um, to deal with some of these, like you put it, tsunamis of life, <laughs> then uh, we, we like to have uh, personal coaches, mental coaches, transformational coaches. So give us some background, Maria, on yourself and your work. Uh, sure, it'll be my pleasure. Um, so, Dr. Bob, I have been, um, I, w- I was teaching the Dell Carnegie course um, for 17 years. Wow. And that's, um, well, Dell Carnegie wrote a book that was called How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. Um, everyone knows him as to how to make friends and influence people. But he did have a second book that dealt with worry and dealt with stress and dealt with how our thoughts actually affect our physical being. Um, In the book, and again, this was, he wrote this book back in 1948, uh, he connected uh, ailments and getting well and well-being to our thoughts, to stress, to worry. <laughs> and yes. um, Well, boy, and, that's and, come such yeah. a long way. Now it's up front and center in everything. Again, whether it's at the highest achievers in the world of sports or youth sports, whether it's the world of business, whether it's the rest of us on top of it with the pandemic, uh, and the biggest topic in the world is, is mental health. So, uh, you know, how are we doing, Maria? <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, um, well, so many people are struggling, right? Um, yes. It has been a time of struggle. Um, the isolation during the pandemic did not help us. <laughs> and um, basically, one way to cope with it is to understand that we have lots of thoughts. Uh, Some people say up to 70,000 thoughts a day. Um, And those thoughts need to be managed because if they're not managed, most likely they will be negative, right? So That's um, why the word awareness is such a big deal. You know, I make a big deal out of three words on the sports doc. I don't get what the topic is. Awareness, education, and positive action. And again, for so many, for so much of, of generations, this connection, and if you didn't listen to Dale Carnegie when it came to some of these things, who the heck would you listen to? Interesting that, you know, he had this other book talking about this side because, you know, stress is, is one of our biggest challenges. Um, our youngsters uh, uh, and all of us, it's just, it's a nightmare. And um, social media has compounded these concerns times 100 also, hasn't it? Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you really think about it, if you're connected with the outside world, if you watch the news, if you turn on the TV, if you read social media posts, you get bombarded with a lot of negativity, right? And basically, eventually, you start believing it. But really, one step to beginning to manage your thoughts is to ask, is what I'm thinking true, right? Because even when we think a thought, independent of the outside world, most of the time, it's affected by what I call in my book, um, it's filtered by your pain, So whatever pain you have been through in the past, it kind of comes up again over and over and over again in your thoughts. So even the thoughts that you're having, if it's a negative thought, you have to start asking yourself, is it true? And of course, we're going to answer, yes, of course, it's true. It's my thought. The second question would be, is it really true, right? And my third well, you know, it's like the famous Mike Dooley, the motivational speaker, he said, he wrote his books, and so, you know, thoughts are things. And, uh, you know, sometimes people don't get it. And 
it seems that everybody knows a lot of this, but it's so much easier said than done to the ability of um, maybe paying attention to, you know, if you could just add maybe three or four good thoughts a day, you know, in, in the mix and, and try to stick with it. Is that a good process, Maria? Absolutely. And we're blessed with this wonderful mind of ours that has the capability to imagine, right? And uh, many of your sports fans and sports teams use visualization in order to create a win or to, you know, I know many Olympic teams actually use visualization. They see themselves winning the gold or winning, you know, and and sometimes it comes exactly with, comes out exactly the way they imagined it, right? Yes, my so, world of figure yeah. skating in the 2010 Men's Olympic gold medalist grew up here in Illinois, Evan Lysacek. He was 10 years old when I put orthotics in his skates. 12 years later, he was the gold medalist. But figure skating, even year, decades back, paid attention to visualization, Absolutely. where they, these kids would imagine their perfect programs. And, you know, decades ago, sports thought that stuff was voodoo. Now yeah. it's semi-religion. I think uh, that, um, you know, these kinds of thoughts and ideas have, um, have made a, a huge difference. Um, tell us about your book, uh, Tsunami of Greatness. Right, right. But, um, Dr. Bob, I'm going to go to my book for a second. Why not use visualization for your life, right? So if yes. you're worried about something or if you're afraid something is going to come into your life, why not visualize yourself the way you want your life to come out, <laughs> with the way you want things to work out, right? So, so do my you find, do, so you find if somebody says, look, I'm going to take 10 minutes a day, uh, when someone says, you know, how long and what about, you know, meditation, but I'm going to pay attention each day to the, some of these anti-stress techniques, um, I think they should teach these relaxation techniques in in schools, for God's sake. Absolutely, absolutely. So whatever negative thoughts are, sometimes are repeated. We hear them every day, right? Especially if we want them to go away. Um, Those thoughts keep coming back, and we hear them over and over and over. You made a big point, Maria. You mentioned something that really hit me. You said almost all of these thoughts are related in some way, shape, or form with past pain. In some way, exactly. shape. I think that's a uh, that's a, a a powerful um, thought. Absolutely, every all our thoughts are no wonder <laughs> <laughs> are filtered by our own Jeez. pain, right? Yes, um, my elbow so, killing me. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, so one of the things that you could do is write down what are these repeating thoughts that you're having. What are these fears that keep coming up? And I would say create an affirmation. Now, many of you might say, what is an affirmation? It's just a a sentence. You know, let's say, um, you know, I am afraid that I'm going to, you know, that I'm getting a cold, you know, that it's coming. You could write an affirmation that says, I'm now happy and grateful that I am healthy. I am now happy and grateful that I am out and about and feeling, you know, wonderful, you know, this week. Um, Affirmations have become a huge topic with the whole motivational world, you know, including health and wellness, at least, like you're saying. But, uh, again, it it, it seems uh, we just need to add to the awareness and the education about some of these uh, uh, factors um, to, uh, uh, you know, pay attention to just hey, spend, spend some time, you know, including this in the, in the craziness of all of our lives, let alone when we're challenged in one regard or another. Maria, what's the best website people could find out about you, your work in the book? What's the best right. website? So my website is recreatesuccessnow.com. And if you go there, you will see my book. My book, uh, Tsunami to Greatness, very quickly, Dr. Bob. Basically, I wanted to put the message out there that if something is going on in your life that's negative, that you don't want it to be happening, that you think is just absolutely horrible, 
I wanted everyone to know that every life tsunami is what I call those. <laughs> every life yeah, tsunami. Yeah, right. Everybody can picture that. That's a great title. <laughs> really. <laughs> every life tsunami brings us to our next level of greatness. Um, a new version of ourselves comes out that is basically smarter, um, has learned a lot of lessons, and it's almost like a new person, a rebirth. Um, and and if we look at our life tsunamis as not necessarily a negative thing, but really an evolutionary thing, that we're moving towards the promotion of ourselves to a greater version of ourselves, um, you know, just like a caterpillar, you know, becomes a butterfly. And, you know, it's not comfortable, right, to go from a caterpillar to, to a butterfly, but it's part of the process. So through my book, I wanted people to see that everything in the universe is, is positive, to understand that you do have control. You know, you could um, have gratefulness journals that will put you in a positive mindset. You could create affirmations that you repeat every day, and by visualizing them, you could create the life you want and ultimately live your dream life and your purpose. Yeah, it's a, it's a great goal, you know, for all of us. And again, you know, whether we're talking about high performance, uh, whether we're talking about the prevention of problems in sports medicine, those are the two things everybody kick. Can I prevent injuries and can I enhance performance? And having these techniques, you want to talk more about it when we come back uh, with Maria Manadakis, the author of uh, Tsunami of Greatness and... Um, Pay attention to some of these techniques. We'll be right back. It's the Sports Doctor. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. It is the sports doctor. We're going to continue our conversation with transformational coach, author Maria Manchadakis. We were just talking about Maria um, at the break about um, uh, the, some of these um, roadmaps uh, and realizations that you wanted to get across. You're getting across in, in your book, Tsunami of uh, Greatness. And again, the idea that. Um, uh, People need to pay attention to the positive side of things, especially with all of these um, challenges. And again, when we're talking about sports parents and we're talking about teams and interactive relationships and all of these uh, factors, uh, then having some techniques is, uh, makes an awful lot of sense, doesn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, sports makes it very easy, right? It's easier than life, and let me tell you why. In life, when we say, what do you want, what comes up for us is everything we don't want, right? Like, <laughs> well, I no longer... <laughs> is that that I no pain longer... again? That's the pain <laughs> yeah. right. Um, but in sports, it becomes very clear what we want, right? We... We want to win this game. We want to win the season. We want to win this team. We want to be the best athlete, right? When, when it comes to sports, when you say, okay, what do you want? Um, I am sure that the audience has a very easy time describing exactly what they want, right? Am I right with that, Dr. Bob? I know you're involved. Well, I, think, with... no, I, I think you're definitely <laughs> in the ballpark. Now, one of the big problems we run into is when they know what they want and they overdo it and they overschedule it and they overpressure it where we have those ranting parents on the sideline or what do you mean my kid's not playing or uh, I need medicine every day because my, my, my daughter's knees are killing her and she's got to keep playing. 
So I, I think you're definitely in the ballpark where, we again, we see where, how these concerns might manifest and why these principles become so important, but how sports can also, um, you know, blow it out of proportion with the pressures. Oh, absolutely. What do you right? mean you didn't lose that weight? Exactly, exactly. But, but, you know, we need to make sure that our children especially are well. And if they are feeling pain, that we hear it, right? And we make sure that they're okay. Um, Because what creates negative thinking in a human being, right? It could be they're not feeling well. It could be exhaustion. It could be sleep deprivation, right? And it could be an unmanaged mind, which is what I call when we just don't pay attention to our thoughts at all. We just let them come and go and do whatever they want to us. But but the reason we need to be careful is because negative thinking can, can lead to anxiety. It can lead to depression. It can lead to stress. And we definitely don't want that for our children or ourselves, right? So we have to keep everything in perspective. And well, do you find that as, as we, uh, as, as uh, professions, as doctors, as therapists, uh, coaches, parents, that we, we have a lot of this new information that's becoming very, very, uh, um, at least more available, more accepted, what might have been considered uh, half voodoo, 25 years ago or just, you know, some quackery now becoming such a big deal. um, Do we find that the psychology world, the school psychology world, the counseling world um, is paying more and more attention in our schools at various levels? I'm optimistic about that, but it's really, really challenging in the world of social media. Absolutely, absolutely, Dr. Bob, because let me tell you, back when I went to school, there was no social media, right? Like, if you think about, you know, um, uh, and I'm going to age myself now, but who cares? But, you know, back when I went to school, the worst problem that you had was, you know, if you had a fight with one of your friends or if a teacher didn't like you or if you couldn't get, you know, uh, a subject, those were our big problems back then, right? Now, right. someone, anyone who might not even know you could go up on social media and post something negative about you that for some people become the truth, right? So um, the stress our children are experiencing is beyond what I could understand. I could only imagine it. You know, and of course they worry about shootings and they worry about, you know, global warming and they worry about all these other things that back when I was younger, (laughs) you know. Well, that whole topic, you know, the whole, the the safety is, is, it's uh, horrible. It's embarrassing. It's terrible um, what we've allowed um, to happen. And the, again, adding to the anxieties, I've had bullying experts on when yep. we talk about the topic of childhood, childhood obesity, which is still a nightmare. And yep. I had the author of the famous movie book, Fat Boy Chronicles, about a young boy growing up in that whole crazy world uh, and, and uh, well, what, what, they were, what they were going through. So, again, these, these kids uh, who are, are faced with... Um, all of these kinds of concerns in many instances, and this is why we're seeing uh, what, we're, what we're seeing. And, uh, you know, hopefully the, the schools and uh, the medical profession uh, pay much more attention to the mental game, I, yeah. I think. But uh, we still got a long way to go, don't we? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, what can we do, right? What can we do? is number one, check in with with ourselves and check in with our children, right? Because um, what do thoughts do? Thoughts trigger our feelings. So if you say, I don't even know what I'm thinking. I know it's not good. And how do you know it's not good? It's because you're not feeling well, right? So if you want to do a check-in on your thoughts, do a check-in on your feelings. 
And also what I describe in my book is How often feeling- a day do you find for a healthy person, as you're promoting being healthy, uh, wellness, how often a day should people pay attention to the stuff you're talking about? Even if they're taking out a few minutes, um, what makes sense? Right, right. Can you well, tell me that in 80 seconds? Of really, course, I, of course, Maybe of course. tell me next time. Yes. <laughs> give me again, the, Maria, give me the website again. I can't believe the time flew by of, of yes, people finding out about you and your book and your work. Oh, it, it's recreatesuccessnow.com. Recreate? Recreate. com. And your book? Tsunami, Tsunami of Greatness. Of greatness. Great mm-hmm. title. Great topic. We'll have you back. Thank you so much. It's such a big deal, this mental oh, game. What a Hold privilege. on, Maria, everybody. Thank the you. Sports doctor. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. If you live in or near Aurora, Illinois, and you're into sports, fitness at any level, or your son and daughter is, you cannot forget about your feet. Your feet affect everywhere else. There are complex motions that come into play, especially in sports. Your ankles, knees, hips, and back all are affected with your foot mechanics. Uh, Come visit the office, uh, Dr. Bob, uh, and get evaluated. Uh, Check what shoes are best for you. I offer prescription orthotics, which is usually one of the major tools for treatment and prevention of foot-related ankle and leg problems. Also, enhancing performance. Step or two quicker, call 630-898-3505 or go to sportsdoctorradio.com. Hey, live from Chicago, we are back. It is the Sports Doctors In segment where we preview some upcoming guests and topics. We add a little Bob Guy to wisdom, add a few emails. You listen to our great music. We're going to be talking music next week with uh, Pitts Quatrone. One of the oldest instruments, the digadoodle or yaki. Um, and its therapeutic value in all sorts of different conditions and stress reduction. Um, that's going to be a fascinating show with him. And then we're going to talk big time brain health with Leanne Stubber, uh, that whole area and her organization, uh, uh, with that topic of, uh, healthy, uh, brain function, things that people need to be paying attention to, including the world of high performance. And sports performance. The following week, speaking of sports performance, uh, one of the world's great trainers, he was just honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award from the National Fitness Hall of Fame, Bill Crawford. He was one of the initial Nautilus guys years ago out there in Arizona. And then we're going to be talking figure skating. Uh, former champion, Signe Ronka. She's now the uh, publisher of the great figure skating fitness magazine. Great stuff. People say, Dr. Bob, you just the, the umbrella of topics that you include on the sports doctor is something we really take pride in. You know, Bob Guida made a big deal out of jump training and fall training when he was working with these great athletes. Uh, he, the jump box, which was this unstable box that an athlete would jump up on, and he called it perching power, balance. And then the technique in coming down with good structural integrity and and balance. Um, Sometimes these athletes were connected to rubber bands uh, in all sorts of different directions. But the topic of training the uh, whole activity of jumping, including coming down. You know, in our facility, Sports Performance Rehab Institute, we had a whole room that was cut out the floor about a foot and a half down and padded for people to practice landing and jumping down. Just um, 
fantastic stuff. Think about that athlete in baseball flying around, jumping, falling, different directions, whatever the sport, and learning how to, um, as best you can, land softly. This is great stuff. Some emails. Uh, Pete says, my dad is 80 years old. He, he's got he's a little unstable. Uh, you talk about orthotics a lot in sports. Bingo, Pete. Big weapon. My experience is, uh, if done properly, orthotics are a step-up period. When we're talking about proper alignment, proper support, good shoes, of course. That's the gold program is good walking shoes with combination of prescription orthotics, even over-the-counter devices, from a Dr. Scholl's. Uh, super feet, other types of over the counter can be a good idea and comfortable, but absolutely orthotics is a great way for optimum balance. Uh, my oldest was 103 years old, the great author, <laughs> Dr. Marie Frost, uh, and, uh, her orthotics that she wore for 35 years. Very, very important. Huge topic today, preventing falls. Every physical therapist group is paying big attention to that. Phyllis says, my 14-year-old son, football player, he's constantly dealing with these ingrown toenails on one side of his big toes. See podiatry, Phyllis. Ingrown toenails are fixable. They can be permanently corrected. The ingrown edge can be removed, and then the um, cells uh, can be cauterized under the cuticle. Uh, Many times it's a Band-Aid. The next couple days may be missing a week, 10 days of playing. Um, Otherwise, they are recurrent. And have him not be a bathroom surgeon. We see infections all the time. See competent podiatry, and they'll show you how to get this fixed uh, uh, with a good chance of it being permanent. Um, uh, Jerry says, I really enjoyed the book, Hashtag a Sports Parents. Would you elaborate on the four sections, what the thinking was? You know, I just had my co-author a couple of weeks ago, Sharky Zartman, with her new book, Shark Sense. Great, great uh, stuff of life. Uh, and uh, she's a Hall of Fame volleyballer. She's a uh, professor, teaches yoga, and um, she was part of the first section of the book called Sports Parenting 101, all aspects of coaching, of different um, categories, how competitive, what's important, parenting, all of these relationships, including uh, being able to pay attention to the possibilities of abuse, the whole gamut. Second section of the book is called The Sports Doctor's In. It's yours truly. We're talking about everything from what's the best shoes, what's the role of orthotics, what about ice. We include, again, the concussion world with some expertise. Third section, we bring in the expertise. Got eight different experts uh, in the world of psychiatry, mental training, nutrition, parenting, coaching, physical training. All these uh, individuals, when they're input into what it takes when parenting a child athlete. The whole idea of the book, hashtag a sports parent, was that there is an epidemic of youth sports injuries, both physically and mentally. Uh, too much pressure, overscheduling, playing hurt, all sorts of concerns, forgetting about it's supposed to be fun, you know, the ranting, raving parent on the sideline. Uh, And that's included in the expertise. And in the final section, it's called the uh, parents' perspective. You have a half a dozen parents. And uh, by the way, almost all the experts and parents have been parents of patients of mine over the years or radio guests talking about these topics. A couple of moms, a couple of dads talking about what it's like um, bringing up a serious athlete uh, since they're 10, 11, 12 years old, think gymnastics, think figure skating, tennis, soccer. These kids are already as serious as early adolescents. And one of the biggest problems is overkill and these overuse injuries. Or I have a chapter in the book called the prodigy sports. Again, thinking gymnastics or figure skating is an example. Every therapist and doctor and trainer wants kids to play different sports as they're growing, use different muscles have different aspects of what they enjoy, what they might not like. But for those prodigies, we want to play one sport, we got to pay, we got to pay attention. So again, sports parenting 101, the sports doctors in. Let's ask the experts, parents' perspectives, 
Hashtag Hey Sports Parents is still available on uh, Amazon. So, uh, hey, see you next week, everybody. Thanks. Sports Doctor.